This morning, we are super grateful and honored to have Lieutenant Dan himself, Gary Sinise, live in the loft. And of course, we have Kevin here too to yeah. be a part of this to talk about all the movie magic that you've been a part of. And, um, you know, your reaction to first seeing that obviously has gone viral. It's, it, it's priceless. But when you really do watch that, now that you've had time to kind of take it all in, what goes through your mind? Oh, uh, well, I just saw it yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, so you've had 24 hours. <laughs> yeah. I'm still kind of adjusting. He to hasn't it. slept yet. I was totally shocked by it. I, I had no idea. We're on this pub blitzy publicity tour, and I'm just going from interview to interview. And so we were on our way, and I said, "Let's go, let's go." And they made me sit down and watch that, and I was I was just stunned by it. All the kindness and. You know, and you know what, I think that is the reaction of a truly grateful person, uh, which you are and which you have written about in your memoir, um, Grateful American. And what I love about this is that, you know, it's grateful like Gary, and we always try to teach this attitude of gratitude. But this story really is about how learning to become grateful and how you have done that. And it's, it's been a journey. Uh, yes, a lot, of, a lot of bumps along the road. The, the story... Uh evolved over time. I didn't know exactly what the book was going to be called or anything when I started out, but as, uh, as we laid the whole thing out, and I started to look at it and go back into it and rewrite it and rewrite it, this, this recurring theme of gratitude and appreciation and remembrance and honor and uh, love of country, all these different things kept just popping out at me. And then I realized, you know, I'm just taking this story from my early days of trouble in school and all this thing all the way up to this service life so it really went from a singular focus on acting career and building a theater company in chicago with my pals and and the stumbles along the way and getting into the movie business and all that to this service life that i've uh, spent the most of my time on now for the last uh, couple of decades. You know, Gary, we're watching, or Mr. Sneeze, we're watching the video and you see Tom Hanks, State Lieutenant Dan. It's pretty surreal seeing that considering how long ago that movie was and how brilliant that film is now. It was a huge Academy Award winner at the time. Um, and I was thinking about, I was looking through your history. Obviously, you directed Of Mice and Men in 92. Your father edited that movie. Did, um, yeah. And we, a uh, story broke yesterday about the Academy Awards and how they are going to be doing the editing and cinematography awards during commercial breaks and then airing them later on in the show, but not having them happen live. So you sound like you're hearing this for the first time. I didn't hear that. Uh, yeah. What are your thoughts on an editing category at the Academy Awards being done during a commercial break uh, to save time in the show and then aired later on in the broadcast? I don't want to, I don't want to uh, criticize the yeah. Academy for making a decision there. I, I don't know what went into that decision or what the producers are looking at in, in terms of time of the show or anything, but there's, there's no question that a good editor, editor can save a movie. <laughs> there's, yeah. there, there's no question. And uh, my dad, you know, I was uh, happy uh, to be able to hire my dad. He was an editing f film from the time he was 30 years old. Yeah. He learned the movie business in the Navy and then went into the film business. And I, you know, later on, I directed uh, a movie. I was able to hire my dad, and he so cut cool. the film for me. You know, I want to talk a little bit about the role of Lieutenant Dan, because that was such a pivotal role for you, um, not only in how you portrayed wounded veterans, though you had veterans in your life that were part of your family, so you knew, uh, knew about that, but how it portrayed wounded veterans uh, being successful and giving them someone to connect to, and that really has launched this lifetime of service back. Yeah, in, in, in a way, I mean, the, like you mentioned, the, the veterans in my family is where it kind of starts for me because mm -hmm. I've got veterans on my side of the family and my wife's side of the family. On her side of the family is Vietnam veterans. So back, you know, I met her in 1976, and she introduced me to her brothers. Two had served in Vietnam. Her sister's husband had served in Vietnam. I was, uh, in 1973, I graduated. That, that's when combat operations ended in Vietnam. So I registered for the draft, but there was no draft at that point. So when I met them, uh, they started to educate me on what it was like to go there and serve and then come home to a nation that had basically turned its back right. on the warrior. And when we started deploying to Iraq and Afghanistan, our people started getting hurt. We started losing them. I, I wanted to make sure they knew they were appreciated. So I raised my hand and just started going out there and doing things. And it turned into a full-on service mission that manifested itself into the Gary Sinise Foundation and this full-time uh, commitment to in, them. In that video, we actually see people talking about how you have affected their lives uh, in regards to first responders and military. Um, playing someone like Lieutenant Dan, 
I'm curious, can you think of a very special moment where you've met somebody who had a similar type of injury that Lieutenant Dan went through and kind of what they, uh, what, when they saw Forrest Gump, how that uh, helped them? Now, can you talk about that at all? Sure. I talk about this a, a lot in the book because it's significant to this whole journey of uh, first engaging with our wounded after September 11th and visiting the hospitals. I can remember, the, I can me remember very specifically single moments of walking into a hospital room and them not recognizing me as Gary Sinise, but they would recognize me as Lieutenant Dan from the <laughs> movie. And here I am sitting there with a guy who's just been blown up, missing both his legs, he's blind, uh, missing an arm, and uh, he wants to talk about Lieutenant Dan and the story of Lieutenant Dan. So I just sat there with him for 45 minutes and talked to him. He was one of the first uh, Marines I visited at Bethesda. And this is back on September 11, 2003, Oh, when I made my first visit yeah. to Walter Reed and, and <clears throat> Bethesda. And a lot of that is written about in the book and the impact that it made on me and, and how it's motivated me and inspired me to, to give back to these folks. You are an amazing individual, oh, for sure. I, and I implore you to get the book. It is called Grateful American. It talks about you being a little rough in high school and the drama teacher saving you and putting you in West Side Story because you looked like a gang member. You said that right? And <laughs> that made him start his pathway to drama. A That's founding right. member of Steppenwolf. I didn't know that. I, I found it fascinating and just you, a, a life well lived already. Yes. And obviously you have a lot, lot left to go. So we appreciate you. Appreciate Grateful it. for you, for Thank sure. You. You'll always be Ken Manningly, though, in my household. Like <laughs> Apollo 13 fans. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you so much. Get the book now. It's a Grateful Absolutely. American. Good day, DC is coming right back. Don't go anywhere. Hey.